What's up guys, today's video is sponsored by Kittle. Now if you don't know what Kittle is, it's an amazing online graphic design editing tool that allows you to create things for social media, fashion, and even complete branding if you wanted to. And in today's video, we're gonna be using it to design some beanies. So start off by creating a new project file, then head over into your elements panel and go into the basic shapes. And we're just gonna be grabbing a rectangle to more so create a sort of template for the pattern. Now, when you're looking at a beanie, the pattern is sort of rectangular if you don't account for it being pointed at the top. And this is basically gonna be the template for where we're gonna add our design into. And this is where we're gonna build our patterns for our design. Now this step is not mandatory because you can create a pattern any size that you want, but I found this is the best communication for the manufacturer why so they can get an understanding on how big they want the pattern for the garment. After we've established our panel, we're just gonna head over onto the side and object settings and click a color that we can have as a bias color that we're gonna be adding our designs to. This color is gonna change obviously as we progress, but just having something other than white is really good for creativity. After we've got the basics sorted, either go to your text panel to the left and add in a headline or just press T so the text headline can appear and you can start editing it. From here, you can go to your transform panel to the right of you on the text settings and I'm going to be pressing custom and just adjusting it to how I want it to be. So I want the design to run across the front and towards the back. So that's the approach I'm going to be taking for this. Now there is no set measurements. So just do this until you got your design, how you want it to look like. Next, you just want to double click your actual text and it's going to reform it back to normally so you can see it properly adding your brand name and just adjust the size so it fits the rest of the garment. From here, make any sort of adjustments to finalize or just go to the transform and you can select the multiple options they have. Next, we're gonna head over to our text file and we're gonna find a sort of script font that matches the aesthetic that we're going with. I did have one written down, but I couldn't remember the name and I was typing it in. It wasn't showing up. So I just went through the selection of amazing free commercial fonts that you can use for your design. The font that I ended up going with is called Mrs. Shepherds or Miss Shepherds. I think I just couldn't read it properly. It's either one of those two. I then bought the design up in size for a little bit just so it could fit the garment a bit more or the pattern width. From there, you want to head straight into the effects panel and start editing your typography. From there, we'll go into the shading panel and click the third one. Offset is on two. Angle is negative 88. And outline width is on five for now. We're just getting a base and a fill for understanding where we're going to want to place our items. I did do a custom sketch for all these designs prior to recording this, just so I can understand where my head's heading. Then we're gonna head over to the decorations. Make sure you select the different colors so you can actually see them. And most of the settings stay the same. We just adjust it by either two or three, but that's about it. Then you wanna head back over to the tech settings where you can adjust the different colors of each of the panels in a more effective way. So change the background to black and add in a secondary, color, a secondary color of orange or either yellow, just to add that summer heat vibe. I ended up changing these colors anyway, but like I always do, I have the colors that I had in my original sketch as the primary thing first, and then I go and adjust it. Next, I wanted to add flames because you can never go wrong with flames when it comes to these beanie designs. It's either flames or that like rough hand-drawn typography that people be using but I feel like flames work a lot better. So we're gonna go with flames. There's a lot of selections in the elements panel, but I'm gonna be creating my own because I did try this one, but I'm like, eh, this looks too tribal for what I'm going for. So I ended up just building my own using one image and then flipping it around. I started off by deleting the tribal one and duplicating the other two. And then once I got a vision of exactly where I wanted to place it, I just held shift while I rotated it. So it rotates at certain points. Um, and then I try to perfectly align these together. So the flame looked like one big flame ball rather than two individual ones. And after I got it how I wanted it, I just grouped the two objects together. 
last step is to make any small adjustments that you need to do so holding shift you can warp it around and make it fit into the perfect shape following the text and it was ready to start coloring i started off by playing with the different types of colors that we have for the typography and the background and it was just a matter of fact of what looked the best and what looked most natural what i try to do in most of my designs i try to blend a lot of things in so it looks like a complete design rather than have things competing unless that's what you want them to look like i would try to advise to just keep with the normal design rules things like unity and balance and if you don't know design elements and principle just search it up um and yeah that's it i ended up finalizing with this Obviously red, black, and white is a color combination that will never die and it just works and I ended up just completing it on that one. Now for design two, it's gonna be fairly easier because we've got the base from design one, which is the rectangle. All we have to do is go over to the original design, the skull cap, and just copy over the rectangle by command C, going into the new file and pressing command V, and now we have a duplicate perfect. Now from here, we're just gonna go straight into it. We're gonna go with lips. I wanted to make like a lip pattern, um, sort of rockstar aesthetic because that's really trendy at the moment and it would work really well in terms of a beanie design. So I just went onto the elements panel and searched up lips, did a quick, did a quick search, didn't have to look far. I found one perfectly. It was sort of like a threshold outline of some lips. I'm like, perfect, this is gonna work amazingly for the design. Now this gives me remnants of my first like design of samples that no one's ever seen for revision. Um, so I'm like, this is gonna work perfectly. I ended up building um, a sort of a pattern. And this is also similar to the last design that I did with um, Colorful, the sub brand or subdivision of revision. Once you've got your pattern built how you want it to be, you can click each individual lip holding shift. And once you've got them all selected, press command G to have them as a group. And now you can change the color as a group or you can change them individually if you really want to. After I had all my designs grouped together, I went into the layers panel and then I was playing with the opacity of the actual lips just because I want them to be sort of in the background of the design. But I also didn't want to select gray either. So I just went and changed the opacity um, sort of to 75% where I found it perfect for the actual pattern. And then we introduced a new pair of lips that were more detailed and were gonna be the focal point of the design. After we had our lips in, all we had to do was just simply change the color using the object settings to the right of us and selecting each color that we had to change. So the outline, we made it black, the lips, we made it a muted red and the teeth, we just made them a solid white. From there, we just sized the design put it in the right placement, which is gonna be the front or the forward facing part of the beanie slash hat. And then we started to introduce our typefaces. So we're going for that rough punk aesthetic with the design just to follow the lips and the whole um, threshold look from the lips in the background. I started to introduce the typeface, which is Rockstar Habits, which is gonna be the actual name on the front of the design. So we started off with the word rock and then we headed over to playing with the typeface. Now this one was mostly a freestyle. So the typeface that I'm using is called Adventure. Then we headed over to the effects panel and we started playing with the third one as we always do. I was confused for a second. Turned everything off except for the offset and that was about it because we want it to cut into the rest of the pattern just how the lips are and then I went to the colors and just change the colors of rock so we could see it on the actual garment and from there we were moving because everything looked nice from here and that was really good because once you find something in design that gives you some sort of inspiration it's ready to go for the star part we just put star in lowercase font and for the font that we're going to be using for star it's called mr douglas and from here we just started playing with the effects almost the same thing that we did with the rock star first thing is just to set the color to red and then add an offset just around seven just on the third one and turn everything else off and we're going to repeat this for the bottom but the typeface for the bottom is going to be called B B B bouquet. That's the name. I'm pretty sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. And just the same effect. Color fill white and outside offset on around seven. Using the third option in the effects panel. 
From here, the design was primarily done. All I wanted to do was just add revision to the back of the hat using the star typeface. And that was gonna complete this design, honestly. And just to complete it, is it really a streetwear brand without a sort of Y2K star? So we added the Y2K star and that was this design complete. And that was enough designs, but for me personally, I like working with designs of three or oh, else it just doesn't feel natural for me. We'll be doing designs of three since we started this YouTube channel. So we're gonna keep upholding that rule of having three designs. This one was just a complete freestyle. There wasn't nothing special to it. Um, the typeface that I started off with was just a script typeface. Um, and then I introduced a solid typeface. So it's just gonna be double revision on the branding. And from there, I just started looking for different typefaces because I used Mrs. Douglas on the previous one. I ended up using Bungie as the solid typeface for the bottom because it was nice and bold and it fit the aesthetic that I wanted to go with. Started playing with placements just to see what the typefaces looked like together, if they were looking right, if the contrast was enough, and just to see if they fit nicely. And I was just having that thought of changing the typeface because like I said before, I've used Mrs. Douglas for two of the designs. I'm like, I can't do it again. I ended up settling on the typeface Adventure 01, which just looked, which just looked a lot better with revision. And it was a much better fit contrast wise in terms of the design elements and the way it flew, the way it was flowing through, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah, from here, we had a solid base and understanding of the actual typeface. And then I just went to revision and then I duplicated it and added it to the revision name in itself as a sort of design element, just to be a little bit more different and go away from the templates. I ended up duplicating it twice and then just aligning it with the much bigger revision in the bungee typeface and that was it and from there I just duplicated it a bunch of times on the actual pattern. From there I introduced a sort of abstract looking gradient I would say or bitmap for a more better term simply duplicated it a bunch of times and then changed the color for certain um, parts of it to green just to add that more sort of techno aesthetic that I was going for and that was it for this design. Just to finish it off, we ended up importing just a PNG of a um, hat or a skull cap that or a beanie, whatever you want to call it, that was just white. And then we got our images or our designs exported as PNGs and we we're able to overlay them on top of the designs and just put them on um, the blending option overlay, which allowed us to make a simple mock-up. Now this isn't the best mock-up, but it looks pretty cool and it would be perfect just to send over to your manufacturer to display what it looks like. Or you could just send over a technical pack mock-up, whichever way you find most comfortable or easy to produce. And just to finish it off, design one the double R or design three, the double R or revision. I give that one a solid six and a half out of 10. The middle one, I'll give it a solid five out of 10. It wasn't the best, ended up changing the color, but I never liked the typeface to begin with. Um, but to finish it off, the Rockstar Habits, I love that design. It would work really nice with um, marketing and also the whole punk aesthetic that's going on at the moment. Um, and it's just a solid design. So I give that one a solid 7.5 out of 10. I just want to say thank you guys for an amazing year. I can't wait to see what this year has in store for us. And I hope you guys had a beautiful Christmas. I love you. I'll see you when I see you. Peace.